It's Weekend Update. Hi guys, welcome to a special weekend edition and that's because there was some major watch news over the weekend and that was the auction of Paul Newman's Rolex Daytona for a whopping 17.8 million which just destroyed last year's Paddock 1518 for 11 million. It's also noteworthy to point out that the final hammer price was not 17.8 million, it was 15.5 and the rest are for buyer's fees which is common for an auction. There were estimates that it would bring in between 5 to 10 million. I thought it might bring in between 7 to 8 million because there were already 2,6239s available. But there is only one Paul Newman. After all, Paul Newman raised the profile of the Steel Daytona, which in turn raised the profile of all the other Rolex sports models like the Submariner and the Sea Dweller and the Milgauss, which in turn raised the profile of all the other sports watches by other luxury watch brands. So I was way wrong. I don't get you. You mean you were wrong? Mm. <laughs> but this is another coup for Rolex, as if they need more accolades. But this record shattering amount over last year's Paddock almost puts Paddock in its place, as if it's Paddock who? No, Paddock is Paddock. But these are more bragging rights for Rolex to show that they do everything right. So what does this mean for the rest of the watch industry in terms of vintage watches? Well, it's going to help the profile of all the other watches, but the next watch isn't going to sell for $19 million overnight. Very similarly to the, the sale of the LA Clippers a few years ago when the owner was shamelessly forced to sell it for a record then $2 billion, that helped the value of all the other sports teams. So this is good in terms of that regard. I think this will result in the sellers of the standard Rolex Daytonas to ride the wave and ask more than what they've been asking for. But the steel Daytonas have already been commanding a high premium, so they're not going to get as much as they think. And if a seller tried to use this auction of the Paul Newman Daytona on me as a sales pitch, I would just smile to myself and walk away. So one day, when what's on the wrists Rolex goes up for auction, say by my son, here's how much I think it will go for because it was worn by what's on the wrist. And I think what's more telling than the $17 million a watch sold for is how seriously we take our watches and how we hold a special place for it. We can never sell our smartphone for this kind of money even though we can tell the time on it. And no current Apple watch will ever earn this kind of money. It just shows how personal a wristwatch can be. Thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time.